In this lesson, we're going to create our first course. Uh, but before we do that, let's delete this uh, demo stuff here. So you check this box and just click on delete. And then you want to click on new. So this is where we put in the course information. Joomla school. And then where you see the parent category, you want to make sure that you select uh, the category for this particular course. And then you click down, you select the instructor. And then this is where you can set the levels. Is this beginner, intermediate, or advanced? So I'm just going to leave it at that. Now with the skip modules, this is going to allow them to be able to skip you know, the courses. So you just want to set that to note because you want them you know, to be able to go through each section. Or you can set that to yes. Once again, you know, it's a personal preference here. And the course type. Do you want the course type to be sequential, meaning that they have to um, complete one section and then complete the next? So once you click, the, they can complete it once per day, once per week. And this, there are times when you have certain courses when you don't want the students to take everything at the same time. You want the courses to be released, you know, once per week, once per month, and then you can choose the settings here for that. So I'm just going to leave leave this as non-sequential, meaning that they can be able to take, you know, everything. But if you have certain courses that you want each student to be able to take it, you know, every um, after a certain period of time, then you can choose the sequential here and then just choose the different options uh, that you want to give them access to. And then final exam. It's just going to have a final exam right now. It's there's no final exam. It's just going to have a certificate. You can give them a certificate after they complete all lessons. You can give them a certificate after they pass the final exam. You would have to create um, the final exam here in the quizzes section, which we're going to take a look at that later. So this here, they have options of how they're going to get the certificates. And you choose here the options that they can select. So do they get the certificate after all lessons and pass final exam? Or do they get the certificate after all lessons and pass the quiz and average a certain percentage? So this last part here, if you want them to uh, finish all lessons, pass quizzes uh, with an average, whatever average that you want them to have here, then this is where you put that amount. So if you want the average to be 80% or 90%, uh, you, you utilize this because there's some courses that you really want to make sure that students understand what they're supposed to. And in order for, for, for them to get that certificate, they have to have an average of 80% uh, for all the quizzes. So this is another really cool feature um, to have because this is going to, to separate, you know, all those who know what they're doing and all those who are just kind of, you know, lingering around. And then, of course, you can choose here to pass the quiz in an average of, you know, set the percentage there. This part deals only with the quiz without them having to finish, you know, necessarily the lessons. And then certificate message, you can put the course, uh, the message there. And then next here you have the description for this particular course. This is what is going to show up uh, on the front end when people are reading, reading about it. So let's put something here. So this is the description there. And then you can choose the cover art, which is going to show. Now you have two sizes here. You have the 900 by 300 or you and then you also have the image for the avatar for the particular course. So you want to make sure that you design something that has this width 900 by 300 pixels. And then for the avatar, you can just choose an image here and it's going to automatically just resize it for you. So let me grab something for this recommended size. So I've chosen this background here and also this avatar for the, the course thumb. And then from here, this is where you can add the exercise files. If you click on it right now, it's saying that you currently have no media. So you have to add the media first, and we haven't done that. So right now, it's you can't really add anything, but this is where you can add the exercise files so that students are able to download it. And then for here, the pricing. You can choose three options here. You can choose students, members, or guests. And how this works is that if you choose students, they would have to, you know, um, 
to pay for it. In other words, they can choose their plans from here. So when this is said to this course is um, free for students, I'm sorry, this course for students, then you can choose the the way that you want to charge them. Do you want to charge them per hour, per month, quarterly, or do you want to charge them unlimited? So I'm just going to choose unlimited and just put a price of $79. Now let's take a look at the next one for members. You can click here where it says this, is, this course is free for members. When you choose this option, all members are going to automatically have access to this course. So they won't have to really pay this fee here. This uh, subscription fee is not going to apply to them. They can be able to, once they're members, then all they have to do is just, you know, start accessing the course. Or you can make this for guests. When you have this for guests, then it's absolutely free. They don't have to pay anything. They can just, you know, they can just watch it. So this option here is great if you are running like a membership site that you want people to pay a certain fee uh, and in order for them to access the courses. Then once they pay that fee, then they can be able to access it. So let's go back here to the students. And it's saying this course is free for students of since we have just one course right now and this is the course, there's nothing here to add it to. And then you want to choose the renewal plan. But since you're choosing unlimited here, there's no need to choose a renewal. Now, if you were choosing, let's say, a monthly or every six months, then you would come here and choose the renewal fit for this. And if you want to give them a discount for the renewal, you can put that there. And then where it says system emails. Now, since we're choosing the unlimited here, there's no need to have, you know, the subscription you know, it's going to expire in one day because it doesn't expire. It's just a one time purchase that wants to purchase that. So you want to just check on the unpurchased email. The only email that they're going to get is the when they make a new purchase. All this here does not apply to them. And then you want to go to the publishing. Now, if if you will not if you're not ready to publish a course, you can leave this as no. But I'm just going to set it to yes. And then you can choose the date that you want the publishing to start on and you can choose for when you want it to end. Now, for where you want it to end, you don't want to select anything because let's say you choose a date. Well, that course is going to stop showing on that particular date. So what you need to put here is just put never. That means that that course is always going to be accessible, you know, forever. There are times, you know, some people forget and put a date here and then the course just disappears on the front end. Uh, you don't want that. And this part here is for the SEO. You want to make sure that you you know you optimize the course. So I'm just gonna put the title and then just you know put that in the description. Now this is the requirement section. The the prerequisite that you have here, you have three options here, three things that you can list here. The first one is the prerequisite course. Since this is the first course, we don't have anything to add this to. But normally you can be able to click add course and you can be able to add that course as a prerequisite for them to take that first before taking this. And then for here, if you have other prerequisite, you could put in whatever that prerequisite is. And then if you have books that you want them to get books to get and then you can put that there and then if there are other miscellaneous stuff you can also add that stuff here but if you don't have anything per se then you can just leave it as blank but what what I would recommend here is that the two things you need to focus on is the prerequisite courses because when you add the prerequisite courses here it lets people know that before they can really take this course in in order to, to get the best of it they need to take these other courses first so once they see the prerequisite, then they're able to take that. Now, of course, they, they can always just, you know, ignore some of that stuff. But it's always good to um, to have that there. And also for the other prerequisites, there's some other information that you may want to put here, you know, such as additional things that they need to understand to have in order to make the best of this course. So once you've added those things, then everything here is complete. 
So from this point on, you just want to click save and close. Now something happens here, it's showing you this pop-up message here. So in order to save this, you need to come back here and you just have to uncheck this and then you want to click save and close. Okay, so now this course has been created. And the next lesson, we're going to take a look at adding table of content.